And to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello and welcome to the Save Sapphire Podcast. I'm your host David, and joining me today we have Amy. Morning, y'all. We have Stuart. Hello. And we have Eugene. Hello. We also have EJ somewhere. He is having issues getting on a Skype, and he is hoping he doesn't break it, like every other time. We never learn. We just don't. Anyway, this week is episode number ninety-two. We are talking Star Wars week, including two awesome. Star Wars Rebels videos that dropped. So, that's going to be good. Um, so, since it's Star Wars week, I'm going to turn it over to our resident Star Wars guy, Amy. I'm not male for one. <laughs> Stuart. Okay, Stuart. Fine. I'm not male either. That does answer a lot of questions. <laughs> Especially about Jody. Hey, hey. What? Easy. You went there. Anyway, so the Star Wars week was this week. Um, celebrations. Yes. Yeah, celebrations was this weekend. Oh, yeah. And all sorts of crazy shenanigans happened. So, oh, God. What? How much yeah, How much sleep have you had? Uh, you know what? The panels were actually, actually decent amount of sleep, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. Last time, I was last year when we did this, you were sort of like, "The sleep was a lie." That's because last year South Celebration was the same weekend as Supernova. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. I was kind of bowed. I was kind of like, uh, "This weekend, nothing on." That's good. Well, I have. Well, unless you ask Michael. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's there. So anyway, um. Fill us in, Stuart. You're the one that watched all the panels. What did we learn? Yeah, well, the ones that they put online. There were a couple they didn't put up. They suck, and but, we hate them. But yeah, so uh, Star Wars uh, Celebrations kicked off with Mark Hamill's panel. Hmm? That was it. Uh, that was really... So they basically just had a big Q&A for his whole panel. Nice. No, we didn't get any spoilers, but we did get to see him do a live from Killing Joke. Very nice. So yeah, that was uh, cool. Uh, what was next? Uh, after that was a really cool panel. It was called um, Ahsoka's Untold Adventures. Yes, that was awesome. I read about that. It was a really cool panel. Really emotional. It's like It really was an emotional panel. Like After watching Rebels finale, it's just like... He kept teasing about Ahsoka. It's like, you just want to, you just want to tug on the strings, don't you, Dave Filoni? Oh yeah. He even made poor Ashley Exxon, who's the voice of Ahsoka, actually cry. Yeah. That was pretty funny. So uh, after after the Ahsoka panel, I. Th- think was the droid builders because rogue one was like the end of the day it was like the last panel on friday yeah so did we get anything for rogue think. uh for rogue one we got a sizzle reel which is like behind the scenes reel no trailers or anything no 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 new trailers sadly that's always a really well, really I, well, good actually sign. no there was a trailer they showed no no they, there was a channel they showed like inside to all the to all the people in the panel, but they didn't release it. They didn't stream it, yeah. Yeah, that'll probably and drop sometime in the next in, couple of weeks. Yeah, and I know in that we actually see Vader. Nice. So we see the bit. We see the big bad himself. Uh, move along to Saturday. Oh God. Anthony Daniels' panel was uh, interesting. Okay. Oh, actually, 
I need to talk about uh, Warwick Davis actually. So Warwick Davis was ho- was hosting um all the panels on the main stage. Yeah. They gave him his own intro video. <laughs> Why? Is that a good idea? Oh no no, it gets better. Not only did they give him his own intro video, then they they then gave him a mini segue to get on stage. Wow. What the hell? So 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 uh here comes so uh comes a Saturday, we come to the Anthony uh, Daniels panel and uh Anthony Daniels rips out the uh intro D V D of War Davis and just marches on stage. Wee. And he's just like his mic his mic is turned off, but he's just mouthing <laughs> off. It's hilarious. <sighs> then to then to even to make it funny, he brings out this red cloth and wraps his well, he wraps his arm um, arm in it. Cause the whole red arm joke. Oh yeah. But then they actually, it's actually cool though because they then actually explain how he got the red arm. Because it was in a, it was in um, it was in a comic book, and so Anthony Daniels actually sat down and read the comic book out. Nice. I remember it's because three PO and that was stuck on another planet with another droid on a prison ship or yeah, something. Yeah, they were stuck with a the, droid. They, they crashed on a on a mission. Um, all the other droids got uh, one by one got picked off. There was one droid left. Uh, sadly, the other droid got picked off. Um, it was this is cool. Um. So there was acid rain on the planet, and the other droid was keeping 3PO safe, and so the its paint um, got ripped to shreds. But then it revealed its true its um, undercoat of red. Yeah. And so that hence how the red arm come came into play. Fair enough. Uh, wasn't really they didn't really know one any spoilers from that panel. Oh, actually, sorry. Seeking of spoilers, we did get a spoiler for Rogue One. Really? Yeah. So yeah, during the panel, they brought out um they brought um the, some of the actors, like the main actors. So, and uh, I didn't realize I didn't pick this up at at the, at the um at, when I was watching the panel. But I picked it up later. Donnie Yen's character is gonna get killed off. Okay. So so they were interviewing all the all the members and um uh Jia, uh Jiang uh Jen he's from China so his English isn't very good. And yeah. he's like, when when Donnie Yer- Donnie when Donnie's character da- uh, dies, like no one picked it up, like no one picked it up that he, that it, that he said that until like afterwards, like <laughs> the crowd didn't make a reaction or anything. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, yeah, apparently Donnie Yer's wait, character's what? gonna kick the bucket. Which character is he again? Uh the blind monk who kicks who kicks the soul troopers a butt. Oh, well, gee, I wonder how he's gonna die. Vader. I kind of. I was gonna say, I kind of hope Vader. <laughs> you kind of hope Vader. I know. I I want to see like them go. I want to see like him like just go at like him just take out a whole bunch of stormtroopers and then just get stabbed and then you just like it's just looking through and you just see a lightsaber come out of him and he's just here breathing. Yeah. That would be like the most awesome way to do it. Oh yeah. Because we have no Jedi. Like here's the thing: there's no Jedi in Rogue One. This is this is a full on war movie. There's no Jedi at all. Exactly. We have a Vader, but we have nothing to fight a Vader. Well, then again, sometimes you wonder if the Jedi are on the good side or the bad side. Yeah, that, that's a discussion we've had a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> I think myself was grey. <laughs> Alright, so let's move along to the Rebels panel, because the Rebels panel by far stole the weekend. So I, I was up watching this live, Jodie wasn't with me, she was in bed, she was too tired. Um, that panel gave me chills and made me cry. Is that the one where they talked about Ahsoka? That's, no, no, this is the Rebels panel, when no. they revealed the trailer, Thrawn, everything else. Yeah, we, we, we were going to get to the, the big T and we're going to leave it to later, but thanks for totally ruining no. that. Okay. <laughs> Do, do we want to? Uh, do we want to play the video? Oh, we're going. F- I've got the video in front of me. If you want to play it. Oh yes, please play. Please play the video. Okay, so um, this kicks off. This is the Star Wars YouTube channel, Star Wars Rebels season three clip, Gareth Edwards interview, and more. At exactly three minutes forty seconds is where we're going to start. Oh, you you don't have the actual trailer. 
Trailer. Oh, I've got the trailer trailer. That's a little bit later. Oh, so we're going to do the little video first. Okay. Little video first. You're welcome. Uh, I knew you would not let your old partner Hondo rot away in this prison. Hondo, it's good to see you. Not really. You better have the intel you promised. Yes, we do. I'm sorry, we? Yes, me and my business associate, Terba. <laughs> the secrets he knows. You're right. Go, the little pig guy. <laughs> I like the little pig guy. What's fun? Now rescuing two people. Hey, yeah. twice the oh, one. And hasn't... Hasn't Ezra grown? Yeah, there's a big time lapse. Oh, yeah. He, it, at least a couple of years by the look of it. Yeah, he's, he's definitely not a kid anymore. No. Yeah. He's as tall as Buddy Sabine now. And just about as gangly, which is kind of hilarious. I want to. Know, I want to know how. So we. So he's got a new lightsaber and all. I want to know where he got the crystal from. It. The green for the green one. Yeah. Yeah. Because he. Because he, he. It reminds you of Luke's. Big um green one because um after obviously we know the baby killer got got his hand got chopped off on Bespin so the lightsaber <laughs> fell with it. Yeah. Um. Uh, between five and six, he goes back to Ben's hut on Tatooine and finds a book that has a thumb imprint that only Luke's thumb could open. If anyone else tried, the book would, like, burn up into ashes. Yeah. And so he opens the book, and inside are, uh, plant, uh, um, is, is, uh, like, plans to build a new lightsaber. But there were no kyber, there was no kyber crystals at that time yeah. left. So what Luke did is he, he synthesized the crystal. So I'm wondering if that's a similar thing as to what Ezra did, or if they actually did find, or they just went and found another copper crystal. Yeah. Well, there's no real clear shots of his. Like, it'd be it'd be interesting if the crystal that he used in Ezra's saber was the the sort of the core of Luke's crystal, if you know what I mean. That'd be a really cool way to tie them together. So anyway, so so they it's, it's basically just the prison break. Just a, a single shot from what looks like one of the early episodes of Rebels. Poor little kid, pig guy gets his ass uh, kicked. I believe that's episode two. Yeah. Of season three, because they um they did show two episodes to people inside the panel celebration. So. Nice. I believe it was either episode one or episode two. I think it was episode two. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. So people, Stuart can't actually hear the trailer when I play it. That you guys can. Um, because that's just the way this setup works. So, um, now it's time to watch the Star Wars Rebel Season 3 trailer. Woo! So, this one has just so many awesome beats in it. I was watching this at 4 o'clock in the morning, and long story short, a little way into it, Thrawn turns up, and I screamed way too loud for 4 o'clock in the morning. Holy fuck, it's Thrawn. Thorn. Thrawn. I know what I mean. You got yelled at for it? Oh, I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> a little bit of an incredibly large amount of trouble for screaming that at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm sure your neighbours didn't appreciate it. Ahsoka! All used to stuff <laughs> so, so, the trailer's playing now, so you can hear the audio, but you guys should watch the video. You see... never let my friends get hurt again. It starts off with, um, what's his face, with a beard? Kanan. Kanan. Yeah, he has a beard. Kanan with a beard, oh, with a mask to... over his helmet, with they're angry just eyes. They're turn Kanan into General Coda from The Force Unleashed. Yeah. So, so Kanan is now bearded Kanan, and he's got a mask with Daredevil eyes, effectively. <laughs> They, they talk about that, actually, afterwards. It's funny. Yeah. And we see Ezra's helmet collection is increasing. He has got three helmets in his collection now. Um, and he is deeply troubled by Ahsoka. I never let my friends get hurt again. She's not dark or light? So. We don't know where she is at the moment. Yeah, we don't know what happened to her. 
Um, last we've seen, she had her ass kicked by Vader. Yeah, then it's it, it's hinted that she might return, but Dave Filoni hasn't given anything away. Yeah. Um, we see Ezra an the annihilating Jedi. Oh, I managed to pause it with a decent look at the lightsaber. It actually looks fairly similar to Luke's. Yeah, I know. Like the design is very like cut for like very traditional Jedi now. Yeah. I kind of miss the old blaster. The the blaster <laughs> saber. Say, but I really, I really like, I really liked his like, saber because it was so unique. Yeah. It's gone now. What the uniqueness? Yeah. Yeah. It's just generic Jedi lightsaber now. So yeah, so, Tim kicking ass. Okay, let's just play a little bit more. What if there are secrets we can learn from it that'll help us destroy the Sith? Ezra, the secrets oh, are we? That thing uh, that's really cool. Um. Mm -hmm. Really cool um, voice actor who jo who's joined the Rebels uh, yeah. family. Tom Baker. Oh yeah, we'll get to, we'll get to that in a minute because he's right at the end, and I keep pausing the video. So far, I've successfully made it to the part where they're like um, about thirty seconds in on the dot, uh, where they're fighting backwards and forwards about the the holocron, and he's like, "What if there's things in here we can learn?" No, that's a Sith holocron. You don't want to learn from that. That that's a bad idea. I don't care. Still want to learn. Pretty much. So now, she, now the defection to the rebels story. I suspect that the majority of the people wedge. that are going to defect, are going to end badly. In the, Except for Wedge. In the the words of Admiral Ackbar, it's a trap. Except for Wedge. Yeah, Wedge, except for Wedge. Wedge survives. Because <laughs> um, you can't kill off Wedge Antilles. Exactly. And then you see the, what well, looks like, ties fighting ties. Call me Wedge. Welcome to the Rebellion. Yeah, that's them defecting. Yeah. So they're still on their Imperial gear. Yeah. I didn't actually pick up on it. He says, you can call me Wedge. It's like, wow, I yeah. I picked up straight away. I was like, Wedge? I can't believe we're here to break this guy out of prison. And... My friends, my friends! Oh no! I give to you Reclam Station. If we could steal a squadron's worth, they would be key to build. Now they could steal a squadron's worth of the bombers, the Y wings. Yes. Strike fleet. Let's go get them. Everybody ready? Yep. Let's... Yeah. Oh, that's a, actually a better shot. You see, um. So, even though he is blind, Kanan is still more than happy to wield a laser of death. Because that will never, ever end badly. At all. Ever. <laughs> just, yeah, it will. There's no way that could possibly end badly. Nope. Yep. Let's go. One last glorious day in the Grand scene. Army of the Republic. Oh, they're up against battle droids. One last glorious day in the... In the... Yeah, I saw the battle droids and I was like... Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that's. How are we gonna do that? I wonder. That's not ex that's that's not expected. Flying stormtroopers. Worse, Mandalorians who serve the Empire. You haven't forgotten our ways. So, Mandalorians that serve the Empire. There's no way that can end well. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah. So, I, I, considering the Mandalorians are almost this, lack of a better way of putting it, the Scottish of the Star Wars universe, they're just warriors that just want independence and fuck you for trying to take control of us, I'm genuinely surprised some of them want to work with the Empire. Because my understanding was they didn't like the Empire or the Republic. They didn't like any of it. They're like, we just want freedom, damn it. Eh, some of them just just greed. Yeah, that too, I guess. Um... So then we see what looks like a destroyed planet. It, it actually kind of to me looked like the middle of the Star Killer base got chopped off. Yeah, well, what it looks like to me is that a test firing of the Death Star didn't really end well. Yeah. <laughs> sort of yeah. nuked half the planet instead of the whole thing. Um, well, it, the thing with Rebels actually is that it's meant to. S the tie-in is, it's meant to be in the same time when Rogue One happens. Yeah. 
So, so my question is, are we going to get a tie-in, or are they going to be sent off somewhere else when Rogue One happens? Oh, it would be cool if there was a live-action Rebel Squad. Like, like just in no, the... no, I don't think they'll, no, no, I don't think no, no, they'll take me... them live action. No, no, no. I let think me, they'll let me bring finish. a Rebels. Per... I think they'll bring a Rogue One into Rebels. Let me finish. Um, a, a tie-in, but and the the tie-in is you see the main guys from Rogue One walking down a hallway, and in the background you see Ezra walk past. Something no, like no, that. No, you just have chop. You just have chopper. Chopper, <laughs> <laughs> chopper, you can do. So, but yeah, anyway, that planet has seemed way better days. <laughs> yes, yes it has. That has earned my respect. I thought all Star Wars planets had seen better days before they got to it. Yeah. No, no, this planet is... It's like, um... Put it this way. It's like Unicron went, Oh, I'll see what this planet tastes like. Ugh, it didn't taste very good. I'm gonna leave <laughs> that there. <laughs> sort of nommed on... Like, it. Yeah. Took a nom out of one side of it. It was like, yeah, I'm done now. Um... Then the next few shots are... Um, it looks like more sort of issues with droids. Yeah, lots more droids. Um, wow, well, how only a minute and a half into this trailer. There's so a what's in it for you two? It is a lot in the trailer. That sort of thing. Like, they so really managed to pack in a ton in that trailer. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to jump back just a little bit. So what's in it for you two? Riches untold, that sort of thing. So we'll split the treasure. <laughs> split the treasure. Oh, that's a classic. So yeah. So up until this point, it's been showing the rebel side of things, and now it switches sides and goes, yeah. You guys love those guys? Well, we have something for you. 145. Governor Price, these rebels have proven particularly stubborn. How do you intend There's to no other way problem? to describe it, but it's fucking Thrawn. Yeah, yeah, we, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. I need someone who sees a bigger picture. The Empire is getting better at anticipating our moves. I underestimated the commander. The previous attacks were clumsy, but this one was swift. Precise. To defeat an enemy, you must know them. Not simply their battle tactics, but their history, philosophy, art. It's fucking Thrawn. 233 <laughs> is where I just paused it. You see a nice good close up of his face, and he's. Uh, Mahigenko Sharingan eyes. Oh, red Renigan eyes. Love... Yeah. I'd love... I'm sorry, just... The, the, actually, the really cool thing about Thrawn is his voice actor. Yeah. His his voice actor is Lars, Mikkel, Lars Mikkelsen. Nice. Yes, and yes, he is related to Mads Mikkelsen. We have two Mikkelsens in the Star Wars universe. Well... So... So yeah, so anyway, we'll talk about Thrawn at the end of this, um, when we get to finally get to the end of this trailer, at some point, um, and what his role was in the old universe, and what we suspect that role will be in the new universe. Um, so, just going to keep pushing forwards, and yeah. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Caravast. Embrace. Wow, I didn't notice that last time. Kanan force pushes a fucking rocket into an AT. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? And then you've got Darth Size Maul. Not. Darth Maul influencing. Your destiny. Jedi am Sith. Yeah, Darth Maul influencing um, Ezra. The light and the dark. Wait. They're putting a, a holocron from the Jedi and a holocron from the Sith together? I don't see yeah. that ending well. I don't see that no. ending well at all. <laughs> I know. Yeah. What the hell? Is that one of the tailed beasts? That looks like the bull from Naruto. What was the bull's name? <laughs> oh, see, well, the, the, the Bendu? That, that's Tom Baker's character, by the way. Nice. The Bendu. Yeah, what well, actually, it was hilarious when I saw it. I, um, I, I was like, I, I said to myself, we have World of Warcraft characters in the Star Wars now? <laughs> 
My first thought was, it, it, oh, look at the tail up, beast. Like, <laughs> uh, to me, it's uh, a straight up like, we have a Tauren in Star Wars? <laughs> That's straight up what I said. Yeah. No, it cannot be unknown. Your anger gives you strength. Wow, I just heard Ventress. Uh, yeah, um, so Ventress, like, the character Ventress is in it, but they brought back her voice act um, actress. She was actually the voice of the Holocron in Season 2. Okay. In season 2 finale. Nice. And so everyone's been, everyone's been specu speculating whether that's meant to be Darth Kraya from, um, from the Knights of the Old Republic games. Huh. Well, what happened to Ventress? Is, that, uh, so what happens, um, she actually gets her, she actually gets her own book. Um, and she actually gets killed in the book. It's called Dark Disciple. Okay. Poor I actually have it. It's actually, I have it. I need to read it, but I've heard it's really good. So, anyway, we're at three minutes, uh, three minutes and thirty, so... I will call the rebels a bar. This Helen's, uh, clip? I must become more powerful. They'll be the architects of their own destruction. Uh, Sabine has got the black lightsaber now. Yeah, she got, she's got the dark saber. Yeah. Nice. Well, turn away before it's so, too late. so I want to talk about the battle now that the trailer's finished because there's a couple of really funny things that happen afterwards. Yeah. Oh, a couple of big things happen afterwards. So, I have never seen an entire room get up, like after Rogue One, there was a huge clap. There was a standing ovation after the Rebels trailer dropped at the panel. I'm, I'm sort of surprised they, they there wasn't the sort of a... Panel? I'm surprised there wasn't like a silent pause where everyone just took a second to process what the hell they've just seen before just <laughs> destroying everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you hear when thr the Thrawn reveal happens, the crowd just goes... just overpowers the trailer almost if you hear alive. live. Yeah. Um, so that was cool, and then they talked about, uh, and then Dave Filoni actually talks about, um, Thrawn and how he wanted to bring him in. And then it cuts to possibly the best thing I've, that I, that could ever come out of this, is not only Thrawn is canon, and then it cuts to, t they then do a video of Timothy Zahn saying, sorry he couldn't be at Rebels, I'm working on my new Thrawn book. Oh. Motherfucker, I could not believe what he's got, I was blown away. I love I absolutely love Heir to the Emp um, Heir to the Empire. It was a fantastic series, and now we've got a new Thrawn, a canon Thrawn book, written by Timothy Zahn. <laughs> I, I can't. Yeah! I think we broke Stuart. Congratulations, Star Wars! You finally did what I couldn't do. You broke Stuart. <laughs> I'd say it's not hard to break Stuart though. Some days. <laughs> Yeah. Not like this. Like I, I, st I was speech. I could not sleep for ages after watching the Star Wars Rebels panel because it finished at like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> like and I was that is sitting, why I, just... I have you watch this stuff at two o'clock in the morning and not me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah, they talk about that, and then uh, this is funny. There's a bit of banter between some, between the voice actors because they show Sabine with. With the dark set, because they've got um, uh, Sabine's voice actor, and we've um, got um, Darth Maul, uh, Sam Witwer. Yeah. And um, they show the, the the thing with Sabine with the dark saber, and Sam's like, um, "Excuse me, you don't, you shouldn't have that." <laughs> it's like that's mine. It's like, well, it's mine now. It's like, uh, excuse me, Dave, this is a this is a possession nine tenths of the law. It's like, yeah, well, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, then uh, then. Uh, Oh, no, 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 it gets, I'm not finished with the oh, panel yet, because this go, is another funny go, go, thing go. that happens. Um, so they're, they're talking about um, roles and stuff, and then um, uh, Walk Davis is like, you know, you never cast me in Rebels. And, it, and Dave's like, you want to try for Darth Maul? And Sam's like, ahem. <laughs> and so he actually, like, does a really, he actually does a really cool, like, Darth Maul voice. And Sam's just, just put, puts his mic on the couch and walks off. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back he comes back but it's like and Dave's like hey Sam do you wanna did you wanna uh, 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 audition for the role of Wicket <laughs> and, so, and so he does like an evil he does like Wicket's lines like yep yep ninja 
And then Warwick's like, do you want to, do you, uh, you want to switch roles for Rebels? And like, sure. <laughs> like, they just had a little bit of fun with it. Uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, just, yeah, just no, jump, jump back Re- to... Rebels panel it's stole, just stole the show. Yeah, it sounds like Rebels broke the everything. There was uh, there was a collective... There was a, dis- there was a collective disturbance that I haven't felt in a long time. There's a disturbance in the Force? There was a there was there, there was a disturbance of force. It was it was just millions of voices cried out all at once. Yeah, the, it wasn't just that. There was a disturbance in the internet because the Pokemon service <laughs> went down, and then the Re- Rebels trailer dropped, and everyone was like, "I don't know whether to be angry or happy." So I'm gonna be both. <laughs> AKA, on that moment, balance was found. <laughs> anyway. just, this is, I I I. I Rebels is so awesome now. Uh, it started like it started a bit slow. Give give it give it a, a, that. Season two really picked up, but season three, oh my god! Yeah, they were definitely being relatively cautious in season one and two, and it looks like they're stepping it up to be substantially more serious now. Sort of, almost like in Clone Wars, where season one of the Clone Wars was a little bit like. We'll test the waters, see what fans like, and we'll go in the direction that we think the fans will enjoy. And then with Rebels, because there was such hate towards Rebels because of the way that it sort of killed Clone Wars, um, they were a little bit sort of cautious about it, and now they're like, yep, okay, cool. The fans have accepted yeah, this. Yeah, forgiven them now, that's we, we, <laughs> we We've been forgiven, we're going to take this in the direction that it should be, and bam. So, Thrawn, in the original universe... What was he like? Still, uh, so Grand, uh, give Grand, us the lowdown. Uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn um, is one of the few aliens in the in in the Empire, let alone one of the, one of the highest ranking officers in the Empire. He is a Grand tacti- He's just a master tactician, where his his brilliance could actually out like his his mind could outthink Palpatine's. Have fun, Rebels crew. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So it, obviously they're gonna have to di- obviously they're gonna have to dip it down a little bit because it is a kids show, but yeah. Oh yeah, but the way actually the really cool thing with the with how they did it and the way um, Thrawn was describing everything it was like they use one key word in in like after when he's doing that little monologue speech and he says the art. That's a huge thing because Thrawn always studied the art of battle of different species, so how they would fight and stuff, so he could learn how to um, counter his enemies. Yeah. He's, he's very much came across as one of those um, Art of War style war fighters. Yeah. Where it's... It, was, it was one of the reasons why Heir to the Empire did so well. Is yeah. He was able to take he was able to take the remains of the Empire after the, it was blown up, Palpatine and Vader were gone, and almost completely destroyed the New Republic. Yeah. So God only knows what the hell's going to happen in Rebels. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Thrawn is definitely one of the most dangerous characters in the Star Wars universe. Considering his... And he's canon! Yeah. Sorry. And the funny thing is, he's not even that strong force-wise. No, he's not force-sensitive at all. Yeah. It's, it, it's, he's just pure Spock. Pure, yeah, e- evil pure. Spock. Oh, well, he has a bit of a, a bit, a bit more emotion than Spock, but yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, no, his mind is just his his mind. Like, uh, uh, God, I've <laughs> it's just the way he can outthink everything is almost like his time to him is standing still. Yeah, and he can just act on his own will, which is how he became a uh, Grand Admiral. Yeah, which is really rare. Like, it's hard enough getting to. Grand Admiral in an, in the Empire, a ch- let alone an alien doing it. Because God only knows we know the Empire don't like aliens. Yeah, they, 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 after all, all their stormtroopers are white, so you know they're all human. Italy. So well, aren't they clones? No, they, the, 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 the after, originally when the, the Empire the... started out, yes, they were clones, but then they faded, phased out the clones and just got regular people. Yeah. Pretty much Hence why the blasters are shit. Yeah. Hence why they're like, oh look, a target. <laughs> I'm gonna a... shoot in the general direction. Oh no, I killed the guy behind me. How fuck knows? 
Actually, I'm gonna um, cut away completely from celebrations and um, talk. Make it uh, remind me of a funny line from um, Lego Star Wars: Force oh, Awakens. Oh God! So um, you're playing as Ray and you're escaping, and you he- overhear these two um, stormtroopers talking, and it's like, "What was your score? What was your score of the academy?" It's like three out of ten. Three out of ten. That's a new academy record. <laughs> Like they, they full on just make the joke. They that's full on so just bad. make the joke that they can't aim. That's I, I, so bad. Sorry, it just I had to, I had to t- tell tell that joke because oh. I, it made sense. Stormtroopers. It reminds me of that episode of Stargate SG One where they're outfitting the Rebel Jafar with Earth weapons. Oh yeah. And he he gets his staff. He's like, this guy is one of our best marksmen. And he he puts the staff up over his shoulder. He looks down. He goes he goes thwack thwack thwack, and he hits. Um, two out of three, but the two that hit, one is, like, really high, and one is, like, really low, and it's, like, and the third one sort of hits the ground behind, it's like, oh, that's really cool. Okay, now we got to demonstrate the P90. Okay, you there, in the skirt, make that thing swing, and then she just shreds it, which a P90 would never do, because a P90 is only a 9mm, hence P90. They would do yeah. sweet fuck all, but it's not the point. Shreds the wood, it's like, now we got to demonstrate it on single fire mode. It just does one bullet breaks the breaks the rope and the Jafar are just like Um <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Sure. So uh, Stormtroopers. They're a weapon of intimidation. Yep. Jedi. They're a weapon of war. <laughs> Speaking of Stormtroopers, um we've got a new kind of Stormtrooper actually in Rogue One. Well, two kinds, we've got the Death Troopers, but now we have Shore Troopers. Shore troopers. Basically, they can go in and out of the water. Oh. So scuba troopers. Pretty much. Excellent. Their outfits are hilarious because it looks like they've got um, like they've got the armor on top, and then their legs looks like they have bodies on. <laughs> well. You gotta make them be able to swim somehow. God, that only knows that armor. I mean, that armor is literally useless. Yeah, that armor is literally useless. Seriously, if I was in the Star Wars universe and I was going up against an enemy, I would have a Captain America shield made of a mirror. You're shooting lasers at me. Lasers deflect off, off reflective surfaces. Pew, 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 problem solved. No, no, make it out of vibranium. Um, not, <laughs> not vibranium. <laughs> Cortosis is what I meant to say. Yeah. Make it out of a cortosis weave because then you can actually use it on lightsabers. That's even funnier. Yes, we'll do that. Cortosis is the only metal in the Star Wars universe that can repel a lightsaber. And why it's, not? Uh, hence why Vibro Swords and Vibro Blades actually work against lightsabers. Yeah. Because they're made of, of a Cortosis weave. Yeah, and uh, probably it's probably more than likely the equivalent of Unobtainium, where it's like ridiculously, redonkulously, stupidly rare. No, actually, Cortosis is not that rare at all, actually. <laughs> It's actually like common as hell. How do you think there's so many swords? Out? How do you think there's so many swords in the universe? Yeah, fair point. So. Um, so we'll move along to Sunday. Yep. Of celebrations. Uh what were the main panels? Oh, Carrie Fisher. <laughs> Carrie Fisher's panel was hilarious. Was she tormenting people again? She better be. No. Oh. No, she was just making jokes about the baboon ass hair. The what? Oh, she made a joke um, with her hair with Leia that one of the designs looked like a baboon butt. Oh, God. Now, every time I watch, like, it's the second one when, like, she, where, like, Ray leaves on the Falcon to go find Luke. Yeah. And every time I see that back shot now, all I can think is baboon butt. <laughs> it's like, God damn it, Carrie Fisher. Um, so obviously she had her dog, Gary. Gary is hilarious. Uh, just because run. um they were, oh no, no I'll explain why he's hilarious um so uh, Warwick Davis was like reenacting scenes with all his guests, and so they decided to do the, the scene on Endor and uh, he puts on a little wicket has this and a spear. He goes over to Carrie Fisher and Gary's just like. Arr, 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 arr. <laughs> He gave Warwick a good old startle. <laughs> like he's literally just lying down on the couch sleeping, and then he's just. Arr, arr, arr. He goes back to sleeping again. <laughs> Pretty much. With his tongue hanging out. His tongue is hilarious. 
Like, he'll sleep and his tongue just hangs out inside, like, bah. That's really not healthy for a dog. Eh, he's an old dog. Eh, fair enough. Um, so yeah, her panel's funny. Again, no spoilers came out for episode 8, sadly. There's no, no trailers or anything either that they showed at panels. Like, this is just... Like, they mention it, but they don't show anything. I was like, aww. Aww. I guess Next they've year. only really just sort of started filming. So. Well, yeah, they just finished. Fi- they just finished filming. So finished post-production all. Yeah. Yeah, they finished um, filming. So post- post-production all. They've only just started, like literally, like about a couple of days ago. Yeah. So, so it w- it would have been really hard for them to have something. I expect them to have a trailer for Rogue One's release. I I do too. I do too. I think because about that's about a year out, which is when they, which is when they did the first teaser for um, Force Awakens. Yeah. So. So yeah, that'll be that'll be uh, cool. Yes, it will. Um. Uh, I don't know when the next Rogue One trailer is coming out. To be honest. Yeah, it can't be that far away. Well, supposedly it was meant to happen. Uh, there's an ABC special called Journeys to the Force Awakens. No, okay. Supposedly it, was meant to, supposedly it was meant to get released then, but they decided to canon and just show the sizzle reel from Celebrations. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I'm curious. Yeah, well, considering they're doing the amount of reshoots they're they doing... Released, you know, it'd be hilarious if they released it with Star Trek. Oh, that'd be great. Speaking of which, that, that's, that would... that's not that far away, is it? Uh, this week for us. This week for us? Yeah, this week it comes out Thursday. I don't want to see it. Well, it's either I... it's either you watch Star Trek Beyond, or you watch Ghostbusters. I'd rather watch Ghostbusters. To be honest, I've heard better things about it. <laughs> well, you don't have a say in the matter. You've got to I'd watch Star Trek. Chew... I'd rather chew glass. <laughs> <laughs> well, since it's coming out the day after tomorrow, you're gonna have to watch it. I don't know, I'll see it on the weekend. Uh, I know. It's not, uh, unless it's spectacularly awesome, there's no point doing an early podcast for it. Yeah. Can I Suicide gargle hydrochloric comes... acid instead? No, you cannot gargle hydrochloric acid instead. Uh, well, Legends of Tarzan's come out as well, huh? I've really got to wander yeah, yeah, past my just, simmer. Was, yeah, there's a whole often. bunch of movies that have come up like, oh shit, I've got to go catch up on my movies. Yeah. So so we've, we've still got a few left to go before the end of the year. We've got Star Trek Beyond in two days. We've got Suicide Squad in two weeks. I'm going to be doing Midnight Notch for it. Bastards. Um, and, I get yeah. to go in the, and I get to go in the movie and see for free because of it. <laughs> nice. So Suicide Squad's two weeks from now. Um, yeah, August... Fourth, we August get it. 4th is when we get it. Um, and that is a bit of a jump. It's not until the 6th of October that we get the Gambit movie. Assuming that's still a thing. Um, I don't think it is. I haven't really heard anything about the Gambit movie. Yeah, well, do the Google, Stuart. Do the Google. I thought it got delayed back to, like, a few years. Yeah, probably. I could be wrong, but I haven't really heard anything about it. I haven't heard anything about it. It's on my list. I do- and we yeah, did the list earlier this year. 2018, it did get pushed back, yeah. Alright, cool. Well, then, bye-bye Gambit movie. You're no longer important. Which means the next movie is October, Doctor Strange. Yeah. yeah. And then Rogue One. And that's the, all of the movies for this year. Doctor Strange is going to be really good. Yeah, I so cannot wait. Like, just, I can't. Like, he's one of the obscure Marvel thing. characters that a lot of people don't know. Yeah. So, so it would be really cool to see how they're going to bring him into the mainstream. Yeah, and it's Cumberpatch, so... Oh, we're good. Yeah, it's, it's no, I don't know a single movie or show that he is in where it is not getting spectacular. Like, Star Trek Into Darkness? Shut up. How dare you remind <laughs> me of that. You're going out the airlock. So, now still it's out the airlock. What? For one, he is stating the truth. Yep. <laughs> he, David can't handle the truth. He got what he deserved. <laughs> I'm all loved with Michael and EJ were in here because they probably <laughs> <laughs> really would have got it there. Actually, no, EJ probably would have agreed with me, but Michael oh, yeah. probably would have given me. No, no, they probably both would have agreed with you. They both really didn't like Inner Darkness that much. But anyway, point is the point. You have to watch Star Trek this week. 
Oh, hey, well, hey, well. That's fine. It works up. It works up because I can go watch it with watch it with Jody, and then we can go out for our anniversary dinner at the Night Noodle Markets on Sunday. Very nice. So, so anyway, um, it's about time we flip Do it the over model report. to the model report. And we got a number of things to cover this week. Uh, the first first thing is we'll cover the bad news. Based on current information, it looks like I, uh, everybody in the world except for the lucky people in Japan are going to get the uh, are not going to get the Star Wars Dragon model kits. It's looking like Ravel is keeping a very tight fist hold on their exclusive rights to put out the Star Wars kits in various countries. So don't expect to see those kits anytime soon. The first few kits are due out are the one 144th scale Falcon and a um, TIE fighter from the new from the first order and a res- a resistance X-Wing fighter. But I checked the main distributor here in the U.S., and they're saying, nope, they're not getting them. That sucks. Yep, and from what I've heard, countries such as Australia don't count on getting them either. Um, So, bad news there. Can I blame you? Uh, No. No. Huh? Can I blame you? No, I can't. No. I, oh. Amy says I can't blame you, sir. And no news from Zevda, the Russian company that was supposed to put out the Star Wars Rebels the Star Destroyer. Um, we announced this last year, towards the end of the year, and all has been silent from them, so nobody knows what's going on with that. But suspicions are if, even if it is released, uh, it might also fall under the heading of don't expect to see it, because if they're not letting the dragon kits in, they probably won't let this in either. Yeah. Now for the good news, um, Wonderfest was here in the U.S. back in June, and there was a number of things that were showcased by the various model manufacturers. First up, round two showed off their um, upcoming 50th anniversary Star Trek kits. Nice. And the first kit they showed was the reissue of the 1350th Starship Enterprise from the original series. The box art on this is different than the original the original box art, and this will feature a smooth hulled saucer. Ooh. Unlike the original version that we posted pictures of, which had the very fine grid lines, this one, the hot saucer, is smooth on. Then, the um, round two is releasing a F-104 Starfighter aircraft with the markings from the episode the tomorrow is yesterday from the original star trek it will include a 12500 uss enterprise in the kit with it um we already know that the f-104 kit is a reissue of the old Lindbergh kit uh i do not know how good that particular Lindbergh kit is but as a whole most Lindbergh kits um, are not that great, yeah. so we're going to hope that we're going to hope that they did something with that kit. That that one is due out this summer. The Smooth Hall Enterprise is due out in the fall. Also coming out this summer will be the reissue of the, the USS Excelsior. Uh, this will feature parts to build both the NX version, and the NCC version. Uh, 
also returning for the 50th anniversary is the USS Enterprise D. And Enterprise D will be molded in clear plastic once again. So if you want to light it up, you'll be able to do so without any problems. Nice. Also in the planning stages is a set of all seven 12500th USS Enterprise kits, including a new NX-01. Uh, this this is planned for late 2016. Nice. Uh, coming coming later this year will be the reissue of the Bat, Bat Missile from the uh, Tim Burton Batman, Batman films. This will include a photo style display base. Uh, other announcements from round two is they're working on variations for the 22 inch Space 1999 Eagle. Uh, Mobius Models is going to be, uh, has acquired the license for 2001 A Space Odyssey. They will be reissuing the Orion with some minor improvements and a straight reissue of the Moon Bus. Uh, also, Mobius has acquired the license to do Independence Day 2, but no specifics as yet. Um, Mobius, uh, Mobius also showed a mock-up of the Batman vs. Superman Batplane, which will be in 124th scale. Nice. Uh, they have resin kits coming of Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. They have a one-fifth scale Batgirl from the 1960s Batman series. They showed a mock-up of the upcoming Penguin from the 1960s Batman. That'll be the next kid out. And Robin and Riddler are also due by the end of this year. Um, they also showed the upcoming Bane's Tumblr kit that we mentioned in an earlier podcast. Uh, the Mobius is also releasing kits from the fly. These are brand new kits. Mobius uh, will not be producing the anything that was previously produced by Monarch Models. These will be all new kits. Uh, the Battlestar Galactica Raptor was on display along with the weapons version. The, um, the only delay they're having right now on these is, is uh, Mobius is working out a license renewal for them. And a surprise announcement from Mobius was the release of the Halloween Michael Myers figure. They're using the old Polar Light tooling, which they acquired, and they'll be reissuing that kit. And then the last one they showed was the Proteus prototype that's due out by the end of the year. Uh, no firm um, release dates on any of these kits, but when they're available, you know, watch your local hobby stores and let them know that you want them. And this update was brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So You're welcome. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. It's time for the news. Just a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, Comic Con is this weekend. Yes. Speaking of Comic Con, really oh, quickly. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to get a lot of news of everything. Oh, yeah. So, really quick, I need to make an announcement to do with Comic-Con for Deadliest Fandom. Um, we have Gigi Edgley going. Or Gigi Edgley. Or I don't know how it's said, okay? My brain just doesn't name. Anyway, not the point. She's going to be there. She's going to be um, going around and interviewing people, asking them questions about different fights. Now, we've organized almost two dozen fights for her to be talking about to different people. So, if you do go to Comic-Con... And you do happen to see 
EJ at the Nobility booth. Catch up with EJ, catch up with Nobility, and definitely catch up with the Deadliest Phantom guys, and they will ask you, who will win? Something silly or something stupid? Something, or totally... Okay, I apologize in advance for some of the pairings. I had no choice in them. They forced me to do it. And some of them I still think are stupid, but yeah, whatever. Let's roll with it. Pikachu against um, Angry Bird? Yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> we just won't go there. I don't even know how that's a thing, but it is. <laughs> so, yeah, there's there's quite a good few really good pairs, and there's quite a few what the fuck were they smoking when they came up with this. Are you in trouble, Stuart? What about the last No, 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 no. I had the TV on in the background. All I just hear is the Pokemon theme song come off. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> so, uh, anyway. So Apparently that's, talking about Pokemon Go again. So, so that's the, the DF um, news. So, anyway, let's do it. Go with the rest of the news. That's totally unimportant uh, comparatively. <laughs> uh, so this is cool. Um, so we know Ben Affleck's... Uh, um, Batman is getting its own solo movie, right? Yeah. Uh, rumors are coming up that it's meant to be set in Arkham Asylum. Well, that would be cool. That would be awesome if that happened. So, uh, see, I actually really enjoyed Ben Affleck's Batman. A lot of people gave him shit, but I think it's just because they're... Ex it's Ben Affleck? No, it's not the... Oh, it's partly because it's Ben Affleck. But I thought he did really, really good as Batman. The movie as a whole was was enjoyable the first time. Every other time I've watched it, I've wanted to hang myself. <laughs> I don't even have it on DVD. I think that explains a lot. And I'm the DC boy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's out yet. No, it's out. Oh, it, it's out. It's out? Huh. Have to go yeah, down it's and, out. I have to go down and chase me a hardcover at JB Hi-Fi. I always try and get the metal covers if I can. Yeah, no, it came out a couple of weeks ago. or uh, But it's definitely been out for a bit. Yeah. Uh. I really wasn't paying attention. What the hell? <laughs> they didn't really do any PR for it, to be honest. Mm. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna keep on the DC. I'm uh, gonna keep on the DC news for a bit because this is really interesting. Uh, so Batwoman, Oracle, and Constantine are rumored to appear on on CW's TV shows, the DC TV shows. Huh? Yeah, you're right. It did. Come on. It it, it came... I was like, come on. Um. No, actually. Yeah, it come out. The release date is tomorrow. Oh, that's it. I must have, America must have been having for a couple of weeks then. Yeah. The release date is tomorrow. I thought it was out here as well. Oh, not too far off. Let's say, okay. I didn't think it was out until later this month. Stuart, and he's lying to me about lyingness. How dare you. Somebody thinks it's coming out, okay? <laughs> so, anyway, so, continue yeah, um, with your so thing. This, yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, uh, so apparently Batwoman, Oracle, and Constantine are meant to appear on um, CW's DC TV shows nice. this year. Come on, CW, just hurry up and pick up Constantine already, will you? I want you, know, we, we, you know we all want it, we all love it. Exactly. Well, I want to redo Young Justice. Do more episodes of Young Justice. Ooh, JB Hi-Fi's got buy one Doctor Who, get one free. Ooh. Hmm. Ooh. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, it's good because Johnny will like it, but it's bad because I'll probably never get attention. <laughs> I'm not saying anything from that. <laughs> leaving, leaving that alone and walking away. Yes. Yeah, um, uh, so, uh, apparently there's a new Doctor Strange uh, person being spotted in the wild. Who? In the wild? Uh, well, apparently, um, a Doctor Strange place has been spotted in a movie theater in America. So it, it actually, so obviously, it has uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, but also shows the Sanctum Sanctorum behind him. The Sanctum um, Sanctu Sanctum Sanctorum. God, that's a mouthful. Is the is like the his um his plane of like where he watches everything. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's we're out of time, Stuart. So. Once again, There's we... So much news. I know. I know. So, anyway, that's it for the podcast for this week. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we will be back this time next week, so get ready for another blast. 
So <laughs> yeah, of everything from Public Con. Yeah, pretty much. It's gonna be insane. So we will catch you later. Bye. So make sure you look up on Stitcher, iTunes, and YouTube. Also, facebook.com slash save sci fi, facebook.com slash the deadliest fan, and facebook.com slash the ability of the series, facebook.com. <laughs> 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 Meow. <laughs> Meow. <laughs>